what does DHCP does? Basically, it allows you to, it's a protocol that, um, or a server, and it allows that server to issue out IP addresses to your clients um, over the network. So this helps out a lot, so you don't have to manually put in IP addresses into computer systems, especially if you're working with a lot of systems remotely, you don't have time to go physically there to add IP addresses, okay? So DHCP comes into play um, that way and helps you to centrally manage also configurations um, rather than just having to go there in person. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So basically I have my server box set up. Okay, so I have two consoles set up. This one right here that I'm pointing to, this is actually my DHCP box is configured and prepped and ready to go. And then on this side, we'll be using a um, PC03, which is just a client to test to make sure DHCP is working um, and everything is good to go. All right, so before we get started, like I always say, you want to make sure you go ahead and we like to do checkpoints. So let's go ahead and do a checkpoint. And this is going to be since we're only working with one box right now, it is okay. Um, DHCP is fairly easy to configure and set up, so you shouldn't really have to worry about making any mistakes here. But just in case you do, um, you can go back to your checkpoint. So we're going to go ahead and add roles and features to the server. You can go ahead and accept the, the default settings here. Um, but I'm going to bring this up a little. I have this box stretched out. Okay, so go ahead and click next. So role base, click next. We're gonna verify that the name is good. And I've already assigned this an IP address based on the cut sheet. We talked about cut sheet at the beginning, so I'm not gonna keep going over that. We're gonna go ahead and click next. And this time we're gonna click DHCP server right there. It is a role that you're gonna click on and then it's also gonna install um, additional features. Click add features and we're gonna click next. We don't need to worry about anything else here. No additional features. Everything is good to go, right? So from here, we will go ahead and click next and apply. Restart if you choose to, and we're going to click install. And like I said, this is one of the servers that um, fairly easy to set up. It doesn't take much, much to it. So um, let us go ahead and pause this and let it run real quick. All right, so we're back. So the configuration is completed. And then as you can see right here, feature install, we're going to hit and click close. Now, like I said, every time you install something, it will give you a notification up here by the flag. It's either red or yellow or grayed out. We're going to go ahead and complete the DHCP server configuration. So we're going to click next. And as you can see, it's telling you right here that we have um, a few things that we need to do, right? So a good way to configure the server is to create security groups for delegation for it. So DHCP server administrators and DHCP users. Okay. Let me go ahead and bring this down a little. I adjusted the screen resolution on the screen. So. Okay, go ahead and click next. So the following credentials are going to be used. Like I said, um, this is part of the domain, and then that's the user account that I'm going to use. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click Commit. And you can see it's created, so it created the security groups and then authorized this DHC server. Go ahead and click Close. Now, like I said, the gray will show you also notifications. Right there, we did succeeded, um, successfully complete the the configuration. So now we need to go in and create different. Um, we're going to set up actually now the scopes for the DHCP server. Okay. So 
let's go over here to tools and let's go to dhcp and you can see right here dhcp.chief.home.lab this is where you'll go in and we are going to set up our first scope right now okay so on ipv4 this is going to be the ip ranges that we're going to set up we're not using ipv6 right so server options you can always select different server options here like you can configure different options the router and so forth um when you're setting up just so that you can point clients to whatever these are already set up okay so for this demonstration purposes we do have a router and we can do the setup here but let's go ahead and work on the scope first so we're going to right click ipv4 and click new scope and the scope we're going to call it domain ips all right so that is the description we're going to issue ips to domain computers okay click next so we're going to start off with IP address 172.16. Need to turn num lock on. 172.16.1.101. And we're just going to go with 172.16.1.101. Four nine is fine. So this is the range that we want to give out IP address from 101 to 149. It will be the address that we will use. Okay. So we don't need to go too deep because we just testing this for personal purposes, but we'll know that anything that's within the range of 101 to 149. Actually, let's just go to um something smaller um on 100 because they don't intend to have that many computers on this network so let's go with 101 to 121 that's fine All right so 101 to 121 is a is a scope that we're creating here and this is where you can do exclusions so for example if anything between 121 and one if you go back right here anything between 101 and 121 if you want to exclude any of the ip addresses from this pool now this is where you will go ahead and um and add it okay so if you want to appoint this ip to you know a different machine or whatever make sure it always it's always there like for example if you're bringing a nas server or something that needs to have that ip address dedicated to it all the time you can add pretty much an exclusion here we don't have any so we're going to click next okay so the lease duration you can do eight days eight hours whatever i like to do this in a smaller group so if you eight days is too long this is how long the the leases will be out for each machine until it releases it back to the pool itself okay okay so go ahead and click next do you want to do you want to configure these options now we're going to click yes so next next and then the ip address of the router so 172.16.1.1 right this will be the ip address of the router that's used um for this network and then the parent domain domain is here and as you can see um basically it's asking you for the DS the name of the dns servers right here so the name of my first D dns server should be dc01 and the ip address should be this here but it's actually already there just so you see so if i did dc01 and i resolve it it's actually already there so i don't need to add it there but if you had additional servers that you wanted to once you put the name in if dns is working properly what we talked about in the beginning you click resolve and it should pop up the ip and then you can add it here okay i'm just going here and click next Win servers, I don't remember ever having to set up um, a Wins server um, at all. Um, this is something that we've done back in the day before, but um, I don't think from um, being a server administrator, I've ever had to play with this. But um, if you do, you know, you can set up your configurations here. 
go to next activate the scope so we're gonna click yes and we are going to click finish so now you can see right here domain ip is the name that we gave it right when you go to the scope and we're going to go to properties we're going to look at it to show us domain ips it should see the description that we named it the dns that was set up advanced right there so everything is set up now on the scope options like i was telling you earlier before um it will automatically set up the router the dns and everything for you once you set up the scope so you really don't have to do much as long as you see the green check boxes here that means your dns your dhcp is up and running now if for troubleshooting purposes i want to show you something if you're ever having issues with your 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 scope um you can go ahead and do what we call a refresh if you go ahead and unauthorize your your um your server it will not give out any type of ip addresses when you don't need it to but just to show you what the check marks will look like if you go to all tasks and you go to pause right and you do a refresh i will pause pretty much giving out ip addresses to machines on the network now let's go back to all task let's go to stop okay see the red that means your dhcp server is not configured because you can stop the service from going out so if you don't want this to issue out ip addresses you can do that the same now you can go back to all tasks and you can click start again and bring it back um into play so just so you see the red if you ever see the red and i think it also turns black to it there's another check mark for black i don't remember what it does but just if you're troubleshooting you want to make sure that you're looking at the green okay now for demonstration purposes let's go over to our pc and remember the ip address range that we have so the scope the address pool has to be between 101 and 121. so let's log in with justin east And as you can see, Justin East currently has an IP address, IP config that is already configured because it was done with a static in the before videos. What we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and release this IP address from Justin. So now we don't have to. Oh, wait, what was that? Oh, so uh, we're logged in to um, Justin as a regular user. So that means I'll have to use uh, my administrator login. So that's fine. Justin doesn't have admin permissions to make changes. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the properties. We are going to take that out. And we're gonna remove this, okay? So now, as we can see, Justin, we just removed Justin from static, and we're gonna go over here, and we're going to do IP config. Now, as you can see, right here, if we did IP config now, Justin picks up the first IP address, 101 that was available by the, the DHCP. Right now, if you go into leases right here on your DHCP server, it will show you that 101 was also given out to this first machine that requested an IP address, which this is the name of this computer. Because if you go over here inside here and you type hostname, it should resolve to US Hawaii 1001 PC001, which matches this up with the name that was given over here. So that is how you verify that the DHCP server is not working and is functional and um, everything is working smoothly. If we go to ipconfig slash all, it should also show you too the servers. So right here, it should also be picking up the DNS servers as well because those were also configured 
inside of our address pools when we actually configure the server options for the DNS servers, right? So we configure them in right here so that when you gives out the IP address, it also gives out the proper DNS server so that they, they can find um, the, the domains, the domain name services as well. And then to finish off, let's go ahead and do a ping 172.16.1.11. And that should be the server, the DC. And as you can see, we have connection, full connection now to our DC. So guys, that is basically it. It's really easy to set up a DNCP um, server and verify that it's working and everything is good to go. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, thank you for continuing on, on this lab. But this is how we'll set up a functional DHCP server um, at the basic level to get it up and running. By all means, if you need anything, please reach out. And thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and like and comment if you can. Let us know how we're doing so we can continue to make more videos for your knowledge. We appreciate it. Thank you.